All right, guys, so now we're going to have that PHP framework talk because now is about time. All right. So pretty much what you've been learning so far is the syntax of PHP. So you learn the programming language of PHP. That's what you did this whole time. All right. You learn how to play around with it in the views. You learn conditionals. You learn functions. You learn objects. You learn, uh, you know, classes. You learn all the good things. All right cool but what do you do with that right we learned here that we can actually come in and basically use PHP files as a way to route our users throughout the pages okay we can come here and say hey index is the home page uh, about is the about page projects is the projects page contact is the contact page all right that's a very very simple way of using PHP all right and all the little conditionals and little, little variables that we did that's like super simple that's like you know baby talk now it's time to take it serious right because when you go to a job interview they're not gonna ask you just like oh do you know PHP they're gonna ask you hey do you know how to use a MVC framework and what exactly is an MVC framework you're gonna be like what the hell is that so pretty much is model view controllers VC is a way to structure your code because what we've been doing is just coding you know just for the hell of it and just like, okay here's the classes this we're gonna put inside of the classes folder in reality you don't really do this in in a job everything has to be in a structure because there's going to be hundreds if not for thousands of files so there has to be a, a structure to it okay so this is how it works let's say a user lands on a page right that triggers a class that basically is the controller okay the controller says hey this person landed here landed on this route let's say uh, google.com slash about right when they land on that route which is the URL basically it triggers this controller inside of this controller we have multiple functions for every single situation so I can come here and say hey when they do a get request show them the page which is the view alright when they are about to show them the page we need to get the model which is dealing with the database alright when we deal with the database here we pass it back to the user on the view and then the page loads alright so we haven't really gone too deep into databases because I really wanted to do it with the frameworks so like that you could actually see it in action better okay all right so now that we got the data from the server right and we got it from the model we pass it down to the user and we display him whatever we need to show him it could be a blog post it could be a stats of the MBA it could be whatever the, the website it's about we show that to the user all right and then now the user basically he sees the page filled up with information and I'm gonna give you a very good example of this so I'm gonna search let me see blog let me see I wanna search on blog on Google let's say a popular blog I don't even know was a, a popular blog okay let's just say dropbox.com okay when we landed on this page this triggered a controller right and more precise of it right it's probably a class and then inside of that class there's going to be methods inside of them remember methods are functions so when we land here that triggers the get method right and then from there it goes to the server goes in the back end it triggers the model the model says hey this person landed on this page they want to get all the posts right because right now we're seeing all the posts all the latest posts so it basically says okay show them the top five latest posts right and put them in order by the date okay so then now it brings it back to the view and then on the view it populates all of this through a for loop okay so think of the data that's coming back from the server as an array and then from there just on this page it loops through it through every single one okay same way how we did with loops 
This is exactly what's happening here. All right. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Now that's MVC. Okay. In a very simple way to explain it. Now, of course, we can do this manually and write all of this data and you know what happens with the data what happens with the controllers what happens with the view we can do all of this stuff manually right but what happens is we start writing spaghetti code we start not going the best practices doing the best things that you know the latest things because we all have our own way to code right but what happens if we're in a team we need to have a set structure to say hey guys we're actually going to follow the structure that this framework has for us and we're just gonna do it the way that they do it okay so like that we could all speak the same language how do you guys think that there's teams all over the world right working on the same project like let's say Google can be people in India right and they speak in their language and they still working on this project there could be people in Japan speaking in Japanese and still work on the same project this could be people in Argentina and speak Spanish and work on the same project and every single one of them knows what's going on and understand the code because they follow a convention of a framework okay there's a lot of things that we can build on our own but a framework does it for us it's already coded it's like let's say yes we could build a routing system yes we can build our own ORM but why would we spend all that time when we actually have to build a product, right? If I have to build a website, why would I have to build something from scratch when it's 2017 and we already have all those tools, you know, there's people that's been here for 20, 30 years already building websites. Why would I have to waste my time rebuilding something that somebody did years ago already, right? And I could just use that code that he created to build my application. So this is exactly why frameworks are very important, okay? Now, we're gonna go into this, and we're gonna talk about the top frameworks for, um, you know, for PHP, okay? So, first of all, we're gonna start with the big boys. So you got Laravel. Laravel is number one. This is the one that we're going to focus on on this course, and then, you have other ones that I'm going to show you in a little bit. All right. The beauty about Laravel is that it's very simple. The documentation is very uh, easy to understand. They have amazing examples. Like, let's say you wanted to do something with database, right? Getting started. Automatically, you see my SQL, Postgres, SQL Lite, SQL Server. Like, it shows you where you got to change it, where you got to put in your password like super simple like nothing crazy let's say you wanted to work with something in the view with blade there's a templating engine which we're going to talk later on this is very easy like it tells you exactly what's going on extending layouts like it's very easy very open and it just makes your life so much easier because now you can focus on the product that you gotta build instead of worrying about hey what's the best way what's the best practices how should i do this how should i make sure that my my application is secure how can i stop sql injections all right how can you stop that right blade already has it laravel has all of those things for you okay so you don't have to worry about that and it's the same thing as symphony right symphony is another one which uh, pretty much laravel is on top of symphony right is a framework that's using symphony the framework to actually work so it's pretty cool then you have code igniter another php framework that is very popular out there in the community so you can see you got 15,000 likes on i mean stars on on github which is pretty popular man like you don't anything that's above 10,000 stars is popular it means a lot of people use it all right now the next ones that we're going to talk about are micro frameworks okay this three that we saw here are full stack frameworks what they mean is they have everything that you need you know like i said from sessions to cookies to uh, dealing with apis dealing with databases dealing with everything that you need as a web developer 
there's something there for you so you could save time instead of you coding it from scratch you know and this is not to to say hey guys don't code things from scratch it's more of like hey if you're you have to build a project a product for a client or for a company they don't care about you coding this yourself what they care about is getting this product as soon as possible outside and get people to use it all right yeah you could go in there and try to build it yourself create your own framework but that's something that you should do in your own time that's something that you should do for you to become more knowledgeable on on basically in the language but to be honest with you guys when you go to a job you're always going to be using a framework it's going to be very rare that they're going to tell you hey we want you to build this from scratch unless it's a special situation you know like there's situations where you building something that has never been done ever right that means that you have to build it from scratch that's completely different you know nobody's gonna ask you that as a junior developer i'm being honest nobody's gonna ask you to do something that has never been uh, created especially as a junior developer this is something that you know as you start getting older in in, in your life and also to more experience you know you get bigger jobs and more things that you're gonna be customized but for now you're a junior developer man like they just need that extra hand all right now let's go into the micro frameworks we got silex we got lumen we got slim let me start it up with silex so silex is a framework by the creator of symphony and you're probably thinking in your head why would i use silex if their symphony is a full stack framework it's like why do i need to learn this well it's it's something different okay let's say you have web applications web applications we're talking about full websites you know website where somebody logs in they register they save the data you know they come back to the website you got to keep track of the sessions you got to keep track of their cookies you got to keep track of all those things right that's a full stack framework you're talking about for web applications now a micro framework is good for situations like let's say somebody uh, has a, a a video game right they have a game on android let's say the game is flappy bird right flappy bird today decided to go multiplayer okay every time that the user scores and gets a little faster or a little farther than he did before it saves it to a database we're gonna need to build a full website for this no man all we really need is just an API that we could basically connect to from the Android game. So how are we going to do this? Instead of us having a system that's going to be super bulky, because think about it like this. Every time that you have more classes and more classes and more classes, it makes it bulky, right? It makes it more heavier. You want something to be light. So when we do a request to it, it says okay connect to the database as soon as possible send back the database uh, to the user on their Android phone as soon as possible ASAP okay now something like Laravel uh, you know coding not a symphony they're very heavy it's like it's like you have a, a little fat boy and you're like hey man take this down the block in two seconds and it's like the little fat boy is still trying to make it and he can't like that's how it is all right he's not gonna make it in two seconds so he needs something light something that's just pretty much just there to connect to a database and send back data to the Android uh, game that's it so that's why micro frameworks are really good we're gonna say something like this like a situation where there's a supermarket every single cashier there needs to send back the data at the end of the day right to a server in the back of the supermarket how are you going to do that? You're going to create a full website for that? No. You create just a small API to connect to the uh, cashiers. And then from there, at the end of the day, they click done. And when it's done, it saves it to the database of the supermarket. That's it. Right? This is super easy, super light. And that's why these frameworks are good. So, like I said, we have Silex by the guy that created Symphony. We got Lumen by the guy that created Laravel, and we have Slim by um, the open source. I forgot who's the creator of this, but it's 
it's pretty much yeah it's a couple of people you know and it's like it's open source a lot of people are a part of this team and yeah it's like it's super easy super lightweight so i hope you understand a little bit more about why frameworks are important right because this is why we're going to focus on now on this course from here on is basically we're going to use laravel which is the most popular framework out there and basically it's going to give you the biggest chance to get a job as soon as possible because one thing about laravel that's special about it is that laravel comes from the world of you know ruby on rails ruby on rails is like the gold standard when, when it comes to frameworks okay so when you know laravel it's as if you know ruby on rails too the only difference that ruby on rails is on, on a different uh, language but besides that it's pretty much the same so not only can you use this you can also use other things like like i said ruby on rails very similar you can also use django which is very similar to ruby on rails then you could also use something like adonis js which is extremely sim similar to ruby on rails it's pretty much they're all copy each other it's just being translated to different languages so when you go to a job and you be like hey i know laravel it means you know the mvc right and you know how to you know if they're using whatever language it is that they're using you could learn it as soon as possible because you already have experience with Laravel, okay? Plus, there's like a lot of jobs out there for Laravel, okay? Constantly, I see jobs for this. So, yeah, and then you have Lumen, and the reason why we you going to use Lumen is because since you're already going to know and you're going to be in the same path with Laravel, we're going to use Lumen to create uh, very simple APIs, okay? keep things very light very easy so yeah man i'll see you guys in the next video i hope you guys enjoy this and yeah we'll see you guys later bye